Have you ever wondered what the current state of the stock markets indicates about our economy? It's a complex landscape, but let's try to make sense of it together. You may have heard about the rising CBOE volatility index, a potential signal of economic instability. Now, what does this mean for us? What could happen if these market fluctuations were to continue? As we delve deeper into this topic, keep in mind, understanding these economic indicators can empower us to make informed decisions. But first, let me ask to you share, like, and subscribe if you like my videos, and if you want to support my channel, consider leaving a super thanks. Your contribution helps me create more great content for you. Thank you and here we go. Our financial situation looks bad but looks can be deceiving. At the heart of our global economy, we find the stock markets. These markets are the bustling hubs of financial activity, where stocks or shares of public companies are bought and sold. They're like virtual marketplaces, where buyers and sellers come together, trading pieces of ownership in businesses. But what exactly are these stocks? Think of them as tiny slices of a company. When you buy a stock, you're essentially buying a piece of that company, becoming a shareholder. The more shares you own, the larger your stake in the company. Now, why do these stock markets matter? They're critical to the global economy for several reasons. First, they provide a platform for companies to raise capital. When a company needs funds for expansion or to pay off debts, it can sell shares on the stock market. This not only helps the company grow, but also stimulates economic activity. Second, stock markets offer a way for individuals and institutions to invest their money. By buying stocks, they're hoping that the company will do well and their shares will increase in value. This potential for profit encourages investment, which in turn fuels economic growth. But it's not all smooth sailing. The performance of the stock markets can be influenced by various factors economic indicators, corporate earnings reports, political events, and even investor sentiment can cause stock prices to rise or fall. For instance, if a company reports higher than expected earnings, its stock price might go up as more people want to buy it. On the other hand, political instability or poor economic data can cause investors to sell off their stocks, leading to a market downturn. And it's not just about individual companies. The overall trend in a stock market can indicate how an economy is doing. If stock prices are generally going up, it suggests that companies are doing well and the economy is healthy. If they are going down, it could signal economic trouble. So the stock market's performance can be a mirror reflecting the health of an economy. It's a complex, dynamic system where countless transactions every day shape our global financial landscape. The CBOE Volatility Index, often referred to as the fear gauge, is another key player in this complex economic landscape. The CBOE Volatility Index, or VIX, is a real-time market index representing the market's expectation of 30-day forward-looking volatility. It's calculated from the prices of S&P 500 index options and it gauges market risk, investor sentiment, and fear. Quite the mouthful, isn't it? But in simpler terms, it's like the heartbeat of the market, reflecting the market's anxiety level. When the VIX is low, it suggests that investors are confident and expect minimal fluctuations in the stock market. However, when the VIX is high as it is right now, it indicates that investors are uncertain and apprehensive. Now let's look at the correlation between the VX and the stock market. The relationship between the two is typically inversely proportional. This means that when the stock market is performing well, the VIX tends to be low. Conversely, when the stock market is performing poorly, the VIX is high. Why is this, you ask? Well, when investors are nervous about the stock market's direction, they often use options as a form of insurance against potential losses. As a result, the demand for options increases, driving up their prices and, subsequently, the VIX. So, in essence, the VIX is a measure of how much investors are willing to pay for this insurance. Therefore, a rising VIX often indicates that investors are becoming more risk-averse and are willing to pay more for protection against potential losses. A rising CBOE volatility index often signals turbulent times ahead for the stock market. This fear gauge provides us with an insight into market sentiment, essentially acting as a financial crystal ball. It's a crucial tool for investors, helping them navigate through the stormy seas of the financial world Imagine for a moment a complete, unrecoverable crash of the U.S. dollar. So what would happen if the U.S. dollar, the world's primary reserve currency, were to crash? It's a scenario that's certainly unsettling to consider, but it's crucial to understand the potential implications. 
The crashing US dollar would hit the global economy like a tidal wave. You see, the US dollar is the world's dominant currency used for international transactions. It's the currency of choice for most global trade, from oil to gold to grain. A severe crash would send shockwaves through the global trade system. Prices for goods and services would fluctuate wildly, and international trade could grind to a halt as countries scramble to find a stable medium of exchange. The ripple effects wouldn't stop there. International relations could be strained as countries grapple with the economic fallout. Countries heavily reliant on the U.S. dollar, such as China and Japan, who hold large amounts of U.S. debt, would be hit hard. The value of their reserves would plummet, leading to potential economic crises in these countries. But let's bring this closer to home. What about the everyday life of people across the globe? A crashing U.S. dollar would likely lead to a steep rise in inflation, making everyday goods and services even more than they are today. For those living paycheck to paycheck, this could mean the difference between affording necessities and going without. And then there's the potential for a global recession. History has shown us that major economic disruptions, like a crashing U.S. dollar, can trigger a domino effect of economic downturns around the globe. The financial crisis of 2008 is a stark reminder of how interconnected our global economy really is. But it's not all doom and gloom. Such a crash could also be a catalyst for change. It could prompt a reevaluation of our global financial system, also known as an RV. It could drive innovation in an alternative currency, such as a gold-backed currency and methods of trade. It could even spur a move towards a more balanced and equitable global economy for the world. All of these things that are happening are consistent with the alleged conspiracy theories that the establishment has been trying to discredit for so long. In the world of finance, everything that we are seeing now, and will probably continue to see for a little while, happens when the dollar is about to collapse, and the repercussions of a crashing US dollar would reverberate far beyond the United States borders, affecting the global economy at large. This isn't just about the United States. It's about a global system that is deeply interconnected, where the fortunes of one can impact the fortunes of all. In today's discussion, we've unearthed some crucial insights about the stock markets, the CBOE volatility index, and the potential implications of a crashing US dollar. We kicked off our conversation by unraveling the intricacies of the stock markets. We explored how these financial powerhouses operate, their influence on global economy, and the factors that can cause them to fluctuate. We learned that the stock markets are not just about numbers and charts, they reflect the economic health of a nation and hold the potential to impact our everyday lives. Next, we dove into the complexities of the CBOE volatility index, often referred to as the fear gauge. We decoded what this index signifies and how it's linked to market sentiments. Recognizing the role of the volatility index in predicting market instability can be instrumental for both investors and policymakers. Then, we delved into a scenario that's often regarded as a financial nightmare, the crash of the U.S. dollar. We discussed how such an event could ripple across the global economy, affecting trade, investments, and even the average consumer. We also highlighted how this could potentially trigger a domino effect, causing financial crises in other parts of the world. Throughout our discussion, we emphasized the importance of understanding these economic indicators. They are not just abstract concepts for economists and financial analysts, but are vitally connected to our everyday lives. They shape our economies, influence our government's policies, and can even affect our personal financial decisions. In essence, these indicators offer us a window into the intricate workings of the global economy. By understanding their nuances, we can better anticipate economic shifts, make informed decisions, and navigate the changing world of finance. This is not a bad thing as it has been in the past. It's a necessary discomfort to free ourselves from those that strive to keep us in debt for control and profit. Be alert, be safe, and be at ease knowing that a beautiful new world is within sight.